Uh, I'm just wondering how much pressure the ADB is feeling on its resources, given that more and more companies are seeking financial emergency help. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, hell, it's uh, very good to speak with you. Well, uh, as we all know, the pandemic continues to escalate dramatically in many countries, and the human costs are significant and rising every day. Health systems are stretched thin, and there are various uh, travel restric restrictions, uh, quarantines, community lockdowns, and closures have far-reaching social and economic impacts. As you mentioned, ADV already announced a uh, uh, $6.5 billion initial package to address the immediate needs of our developing member countries on March 18th. But it is now clear uh, that the scope and scale of the crisis requires uh, much greater efforts. So, uh, therefore, just yesterday, we launched a more comprehensive support package uh, that is tripled in volume to uh, $20 billion. But to deliver the new package in a much faster, more tailored, and impactful manner, ADB has also decided to further streamline our business processes, uh, widen the scope of our support, and make the terms and conditions of our lending much more flexible. And this new package includes the establishment of COVID-19 pandemic response option, we call it CPRO, CPRO. Uh, through this, up to 13 billion US dollars will be provided uh, to help governments uh, implement uh, effective expenditure programs to mitigate impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this uh, total package, a uh, 20 billion total package, also includes about 2.5 billion in concessional and grant resources. Also, some two billion uh, dollars uh, from the package will be made available for the private sector. Private sector. With this, we will quickly uh, provide short-term working capital to companies. Uh, gets the trade and supply chains moving again and help people get back to work. Uh, well, I, I believe that uh, this uh, $20 Masa, billion Masa dollar package will Yeah. Masatsuku san, uh, what are the greatest risks for the region compared to the other regions like the US and the UK? Uh, yes, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, I uh, observed uh, actually uh, five, uh, five risks. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our new uh, support package will be able to respond to uh, the, uh, uh, urgent needs in quickly, flexibly, and impactfully. But uh, we believe uh, there are a couple of risks. First, uh, the outbreak can and has spread to the more countries, including other ADB develop, develop, uh, developing member countries. Second, it may take longer to contain the outbreak than currently envisioned. We assume, you know, this uh, outbreak will be over uh, within the next three to six months, but it may be a little bit longer than that. And thirdly, if economic effects may be larger than envisioned in ADO. Uh, we assume that the loss of 2.3% to 4.8% of global GDP will, will be emerging, but it may be uh, worse than that. And fourthly, uh, we cannot discount the possibility of financial turmoil and of some countries experiencing financial crisis. So uh, we definitely need to you know, uh, try to avoid the situation that this coronavirus uh, crisis uh, will evolve into any kind of financial and currency crisis. And finally, fifth, uh, this global pandemic could uh, leave permanent scars, resulting in fundamental long-run uh, changes to the global economy. You talked about how you can you can expect financial turmoil. I mean, which countries are at risk? Which countries may need a bailout down the road? But so far, you know, uh, we are not observing, you know, a worldwide, uh, you know, financial crisis or currency crisis. But there are some country uh, whose capital market is, you know, considered to be very volatile and fragile. Uh, so that, you know, uh, abrupt capital outflow uh, might happen. Uh, so that uh, there would be a huge pressure on their currency dollars. Uh, so we, you know, well, compared with, for example, 20 years ago when we suffered from Asian financial crisis, you know, each country accumulated, you know, sufficient level of foreign reserve, first of all, and we have, you know, bilateral swap arrangement uh, to protect our currencies uh, from external shocks. Uh, and also we have, a, so for example, Chen Mai Initiative, which, which is a regional uh, uh, self, uh, currency safety net. Uh, it's already there and so on. So I think you know, compared with 20, uh, 30 years ago, uh, the you know, safety net is there. Uh, so you 
by utilizing those safety nets, we should really try to avoid uh, there any possibility that this crisis uh, evolve into a uh, currency crisis. Uh, Asakawa-san, can you be a bit more specific here? Which country in, in this part of the world, for you, is most vulnerable? Well, I cannot really, you know, uh, say which country is most vulnerable. But I am saying that, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, market recognizes, you know, some countries a very vulnerable structure of capital markets. So we should really be vigilant and uh, uh, closely monitoring uh, the capital, you know, movement uh, day, day by day. Now, you're saying that you have a facility for uh, companies out there. What uh, type of companies are you looking to perhaps help here? Who are the ones you're expecting to actually come and assist? Well, actually, you know, talking of you know, our private sector operations, uh, actually, we are trying to expand our operations in a couple of uh, fields. One is uh, trade financing. Uh, trade financing is definitely needed. Uh, not to be disrupted by this crisis. So we are providing in a short term uh, and financing uh, for the trade uh, to continue smoothly. And second is uh, supply chain uh, network. Supply chain network has been also uh, disrupted by this crisis. So we uh, are more than happy uh, to provide any necessary you know, financing assistance uh, to let the supply chain uh, go on. And thirdly, we are also you know, providing uh, uh, moving capital uh, to the small uh, to medium-sized uh, enterprises so that they can survive until this uh, crisis is over. They are all included in this uh, $20 billion, uh, US dollar package.